Good evening, everyone. I'm about to call the Cranston City Council meeting to order. Uh, clerk, will you please take the roll? Councilman Present. Councilman Hopkins. Here. Councilman Stavis. Here. Councilman McCarthy. Here. Councilman Arcaris. Present. Councilman Colburn. Present. Councilman Tedlaskis. Present. Councilman Vice President Vivio. Present. Councilman President Brina. Present. Would everyone please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Thank you very much. Uh, under public acknowledgments and commendations, Councilman McCauley and Councilman Poblowskis. Thank you, Council President. Uh, I'm honored tonight to have the Kaplan family here who are celebrating 100 years of business being known as the Rainbow Bakery. And the clerk was nice enough to help with the proclamation and I would ask our clerk if at this time she'd be nice enough to read it, please. Proclamation in recognition of Rainbow Bakery's 100th anniversary. Resolved that whereas Rainbow Bakery be began as Kaplan's Bakery in 1917 by Abraham Kaplan. Abraham and his brother Samuel were grain millers in a small town near Kiev in the Ukraine. When they brought their families to the United States around 1912, they settled in Providence, Rhode Island. Providence had been known as a place where Jews could settle with little ridicule and prejudice. Thus, Kaplan's Bakery was born in a small store on Block Street in South Providence. Whereas the breads and rolls Abraham produced reminded many other settlers to Rhode Island of their homes and also introduced a whole new style of baked goods to others. And as the business and family grew, they both moved to a store at the corner of Prairie Avenue and Bogman Street in South Providence and added new products like pastries and cakes. His goal was to grow the business to be the largest retail bakery in the state of Rhode Island. Whereas the family eventually moved to Osdale Road in Cranston and purchased a wooded lot at 800 804 Reservoir Avenue, where Rainbow Bakery now operates. The name was influenced by the family's affinity for Judy Garland's Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Whereas to this day, Rainbow Bakery sells traditional Jewish breads like sisal and chawla, as well as Italian and multi-grain breads, as well as hemis tashin and rugelash pastries. I apologize for the mispronunciations. Cakes, muffins, and Danish, which they sell at the bakery and also to supermarkets, bakeries, hotels, delis, gourmet stores, and restaurants. The Kaplan's Rainbow Bakery is the last Jewish bakery in the state of Rhode Island. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Cranston City Council hereby issues on this, the 26th day of June, 2017, this congratulatory proclamation to Rainbow Bakery on the memorable occasion of its 100th anniversary. Thank you, Madam Clerk. At this time, Mr. President, may I have permission to invite the Kaplan family up to receive the proclamation? By all means, Councilman. Congratulations on your 100 years. <laughs> Continuing on with public acknowledgments and commendations, Councilman Poplowskis. Thank you, Mr. Council President. We have before us this evening 
Some state champions here in the gallery. We have the CLCF fifth and sixth grade girls lacrosse team state champions. So welcome to Council Chambers on behalf of the entire city of Cranston. We would like to honor you this evening with some citations for all of your hard work you've done the whole season. So that being said, when I call your name, please come up to receive your citation. Adriana Dooley. Just watch your step, everyone, when you come up. We got a lot of wires out front. Uh, Taylor Ferraro. <laughs> Michaela Consigli Consiglio. <laughs> Ava Spillane. Olivia Sicoccio. <laughs> Julia Souza. Emma Lancelotto. <laughs> Raina Verma. Samantha Rosenfield. Aria Lee. Molly Fitzgerald. Eliza Gray. <laughs> Ava Gershon. <laughs> Nora Flynn. Kayla DeFusco. <laughs> Julia Levy. <laughs> Charlotte Roche. Sarah Peralt. <laughs> Mia Parkerson. <laughs> Alexandra D'Amico. Milan Cesano. <laughs> Ellie Bailey. <laughs> Emma.
Emily Abendroth. <laughs> Haley Davis. <laughs> Jane Christensen. <laughs> Allison Parentum. Madeline McSparin. <laughs> that concludes the players, but without the hard work of the players, we also have the hard work of the coaches. So I'm going to acknowledge some coaches tonight. Coach Chris Ferraro. Coach Matthew Davis. <laughs> Coach Brian Flynn. <laughs> Coach Mike Furman. Coach John Souza. <laughs> Coach Jamie Cahill. <laughs> Coach Mike Consiglio. And last but certainly not least, least Coach Bernie Lee. <laughs> Coach, thank you very much. Would you like to say a few words? <laughs> Bernie, would you like to say a few, a few words to your players? You're more than welcome. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> All right, girls. You know, I, I'd like to talk a lot, so, but I'll keep this brief. Um, this all was a result of the effort, the attitude of the girls that put, that we, the, put, the team that we put together, um, it wouldn't have happened without their effort. Um, so this, all this work, girls, it paid off. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, you're lacrosse state champions. Congratulations girls on a wonderful accomplishment. We're gonna keep moving with the business of the night. Now open to public hearings. Uh, this is for docketed matters, uh, name and address for the record. Actually, we'll, we'll let Mr. Valletta speak and then we'll let the lacrosse people get out of here because I know you guys don't want to... Uh... You don't think they want to hear me? Well, they may want to hear you, but... <laughs> I want to hear you, Mr. Valletta. Thank you, Mr. President, uh, members of the uh, Council, Paul Valletta with the Cranston Firefighters. Uh, I've, been, uh, I've been, a, been dealing with the city professionally for 33 years. 
Uh, I want to speak on two, two of the, the uh, docketed items this evening. Um, the first is on renaming the uh, Senior Center, the uh, Michael Traffic Canty Enrichment Center. Um, I've always had the utmost respect for people that put their name on the ballot and put their name out there and, and do this job that you do. Um, and everybody knows that it's, uh, there's, there's no glamour in your job. Uh, it's a thankless job. And uh, I've met a lot of good people. Me being on the labor side, on the other side, I've met a lot of good people in my, my 33 years. Um, Mike Trafficanti is, is a special person. Um, I, I think it's been 36 years now he's been an elected official of this city in, in some capacity. And uh, he always ran for the right reasons, the same reasons you run, basically for the love of the city, because there's no other reason to do this job. Um, but uh, Mike's been here a long time. Uh, he always had two favorites. He always took care of everybody, but his two favorites were the youth of the city and the elderly of the city. And I can think of no fitting tribute to name this, this new enrichment center, and I like the new name too, but to name this new enrichment center after, after a guy who's dedicated so much to the people of, uh, of this city. Um, really, he's, he's, he's an anomaly. Someone like this comes along once in a, once in a lifetime. Uh, uh, I apologize for not being at the committee meeting to speak, but um, I know one of the issues raised was that, you know, usually these, these, kind of, uh, these kind of accolades are given to someone you name something after they pass away. I never, I never got that concept that you name something for some, someone after they pass away. Why, name, why not name it when they're here so you, they can see how much they were appreciated by people? And I can't think of a, a better person than Mike Trafficanti. The, uh, the second agenda is, uh, this might be the kiss of death for him because I know you all voted for him, but uh, I'd like to say that I don't think there's a better chance, uh, better choice, excuse me, for the new Michael Traffic Canting Enrichment Center than the new director, um, Jeff Barone. Uh, I met Jeff Barone probably in 2002 when he first ran as a council person. And for those of you who don't know me, uh, our first uh, meeting was he wrote an editorial against me because I was union president at the time. I don't know if you remember that. And, uh, but uh, over the years, I, uh, we, we became respectful of each other. Um, and, and that's the kind of guy Jeff is. Uh, he listens to people and he listens to the other side of things. Um, may not agree on everything, but, um, you know, and this is a funny game. He was the councilman, I was a labor person, and, uh, and like some of you, most of you, we became friends. And uh, I think there's, um, with Jeff's worth ethic, that's not, the, that's not the, the main thing why I think he should be the, the director. I think it's because of his personality. Um, he's just a, a guy that people like, gets the job done as constituent fairs. We've we all seen how he's done with that. And I can just picture him in that, that uh, enrichment center with the older gentlemen's always hugging him and the elderly females pinching his cheeks. Uh, that's the kind of director he'll be. So I can't think of a better choice that you've made for our senior center. Um, other than our youth, those are the people we should take care of, our seniors, because they're the ones that were here before us, and they're the ones that made it possible for what we do here. So uh, those two gentlemen are my friend, and I appreciate your uh, consideration for them. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Letter. Name and address of the record, sir. My name is Ken Mancuso. I live at 99 Hope Road, Cranston, Rhode Island. And I'm here to speak about Mayor Michael Traficani. You've heard a lot of things said about him, what a great guy he is, and that's true. And everything he said about him is true. But let me tell you what he did for the elderly, because it was important when I was the police chief. We started in 1986 when I became the police chief. I was very concerned about the seniors because they were being arrested for minor crimes, and there was many reasons why they got arrested. They were looking for attention, they needed, they needed stuff so they would shoplift. And we understood that, but you know, they used to fingerprint them and photograph them. And I was against this. So I spoke to Judge DeRobio at the time, God rest his soul, and he said, if the mayor goes along with it, we'll support the diversion program. Let me tell you how that worked briefly. If a person committed a minor crime, an elderly person, they would come to our prosecution. We wouldn't fingerprint them or photograph them. They'd get a notice to uh, respond to our prosecution department. At that point, they were given the offer, either go to the diversion program, which is at the senior center, and they would be counseled. 
They would never have a record, they would never have fingerprints, they would never be photographed. Mayor Traffic Handy made this all possible at the senior center. He sat down with Sue Rabinowitz, they got counselors there to handle the diversion program. So that was great. The second thing he did was an Alzheimer's Alert program. The seniors knew, the senior center knew who the Alzheimer's people were, and he used to say, if there's somebody missing, call the Princeton Police Department right away, they'll get right on top of it. That was another thing. Then we had the, uh, the lunch and club presentations. He wanted us to go to different uh, high rises, facilities for the seniors, and speak to these people about fraud and people ripping them off. And, uh, and what I did is I sent a, a captain at the time, he's going to speak at the luncheon, but I sent him at 10 o'clock in the morning. And the reason we did that was to see if he could get in the building. And the senior was coming in, and he said, gee, I'm waiting to see, so he gave a name that was up. She let him right in. So that was the message we gave him. You don't just let anybody in. Okay, so we, these are things that we taught him. This was Mike Traffic Handy. He wanted us to do this. And the other thing he did, he said, you know, he said to me, Chief, he said, we have an elderly program that a lot of them at the senior center would like to do something. Can you do volunteers at the police station? And I said, absolutely. So we had seniors that would volunteer their time. They would file for us, and they would do copying uh, <coughs> reports for us. They would do anything just to get out of the home. Another great concept by Mike Traffic Handy. So like I said, you've heard a lot of accolades about him, but I wanted to tell you what he did about seniors. And my last comment is, and this is for Rainbow Baker. I want you to know, when I was a patrolman, I didn't go to Dunkin' Donuts. I went to Rainbow Bacon. <laughs> name and address the record, please. Yes, my name is Dan Capuano. I'm a taxpayer of the city. I wasn't going to speak, but just take a look tonight. Take a look what happened tonight. Awards. Mayor Travaganti, a coach. Mayor Travaganti. Help kids get in college. Mayor Travaganti, the mayor, elderly. Mayor Travaganti, CLCF building. Mayor Travaganti. That was what, what mayor was about. That's what the mayor did. Those awards tonight, Mayor Travaganti. Them are the things that he did. That's why you gotta do it. He got, the, the, the senior center. That boy, that boy, you should have a bronze, a bronze statue of him. Never mind this. Never mind. Never mind the, the senior center. He's done everything for people. He's a people's person. That's what you say. That's what you should look at. Look what he did. Look what he done. Thank you. Anyone else before I close public comment? Public comment is closed. I've had a request um, from Mr. Coates at the Capinato, with the Capinato group, uh, that we uh, handle his matter now. Uh, he has three attorneys here and he wants to get this done uh, earlier if we can in the night. So if no one objects, I'd like to hear a motion to suspend the rules to hear uh, the ordinance for Mr. Capinato, uh, the Capinato group. So now. moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to suspend the rules to hear the matter now. Uh, clerk, please take a roll. Yes. 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 No. Yes. 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 Councilman right. Kowalskis. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, taking 5-1701 from the Ordinance Committee, Ordinance Amendment of Chapter 17, Code of City of Cranston, 2005 entitled Zoning, Change of Zone 275 Atwood Avenue. Referred from committee. A motion before us, do we have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. I have motion and a second under discussion. No discussion? Clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 
Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Going back on the docket to resolutions. We have a resolution calling upon the City of Providence to rescind implementation of Roger Williams Park one-way traffic design. <coughs> and motion to approve? So moved. I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Under discussion, Council Vice President Favicchio. Thank you, Council President. Um, obviously, we're all aware of what, what happened with uh, Roger Williams Park a week or so, a couple of weeks ago now. Um, in fact, some of it was on, on camera on the, the morning news when the cars were going the wrong way, um, couldn't find their way around. The, uh, the buses were, uh, bus drivers from both cities, I guess, were confused. Um, parents of all the children that uh, attend all the three schools that are right there, Park View, Barrows, uh, to name a few. Um, and I think we all know that it was done without any consultation with the city of Cranston. And I think that, you know, a couple of big issues, safety, number one, uh, for police and, and for fire and rescue. Um, how does that affect them? Um, they weren't forewarned as well. So, I mean, I think it required some study. I think it, it would have been a cr nice courtesy for Providence to uh, get together with Cranston and, and find out what's, you know, what would be uh, hurting the citizens of Cranston, but that didn't happen. Um, and I think that, you know, we need to get some input from our uh, public safety people and uh, ask the uh, Providence City Council to revisit that issue uh, be be because it, it, it was done very hastily. Any further discussion? Councilman Stikos. Yeah, I have a, a question for the administration. Has uh, the mayor made uh, any effort to talk directly to Mayor Lorza about this? Be and the reason I ask the question is that the resolution is, is fine, and I agree with uh, what uh, Councilman Favicchio said. But at this point, um, nothing's going to change unless we start a conversation with Providence and get an idea about why they did what they did and uh, get the uh, citizens to ask questions and make suggestions about alterations. And I, I really think that's, that needs to be a, a mayor to mayor effort. To the administration, Councilman Stikos is wondering if the mayor has had conversations with <coughs> Mayor Alorza. Uh, Councilman, there was some uh, outreach between the staff in, in Cranston City Hall and Providence City Hall. There were letters back and forth. I believe that uh, Mayor Fung did put a phone call in, but I, I don't know that for sure. I think he did. Um, at that point, I think um, it had become a public issue. and. I don't think there were I don't think there were any significant conversations at that point. I think the the decision had been made by the time uh, we had enough information to really know what was going on. The decision had already been made. There had been some outreach by the staff, but uh, I'm not sure if that conversation ever happened. I know there were letters back and forth. There were there were letters uh, exchanged. Yeah, I did I did see the the letters. Um, and I agree with you that the decision had been made and, you know, they were putting up the signs and spending the money. And, um, but I, I know one uh, issue that's been raised that I think needs to be talked about is when there are big concerts this summer, how is the traffic flow going to be handled so that people aren't kind of wandering around Cranston side streets trying to find a way home. And I, I think at least we could start a conversation on that issue uh, rather than, you know, take down the one way signs, which I don't think is going to happen. Um, but uh, I, I think we do need to have that level of conversation. And I think the mayor 
is probably the only one who has a chance of getting it started. I agree completely, and uh, it, that would have been a great conversation to have before the decision, but as, as we know, that, that ship has sailed. I do uh, know there's been some contact between um, the Cranston Police and the Providence Police about traffic control and things like that. So I think really that may be where it starts in, in terms of that specific a question is trying to coordinate, trying to make sure there's some clarity between the uh, uh, Cranston Police and Providence Police as to where they're directing traffic because we want to make sure they're not directing a flood of traffic onto a Cranston side street that's going to cause a headache for those neighbors. Well, could we get a, a report on those conversations maybe at the next Safety Services Committee, just what's happened and what the I'll, status I'll find, is? I'll find out what I can before then. Okay. Thank you. Councilman Laney. Uh, thank you. Just to follow up on uh, Councilman Stiko's um, questions to the administration, uh, Mr. Coop, in light of the fact that this is a, almost a done deal unless somebody backs down, what has the city of Cranston done as far as trying to alleviate the traffic congestion from our side if this uh, situation with Roger Williams Park does not fix itself? Uh, we had, have we done a traffic study? Have we done anything in public safety, public works? Um, can you give us any kind of information concerning what we are doing to try to solve the problem? on our own. Um, Councilman, we have had our uh, traffic engineer, our public works director out monitoring the traffic flow. We've had added um, uh, officers from the traffic division and the police department. Uh, we've also had to ask our um, traffic division to spend extra time in the area because there are reports of things like uh, speeding and, and stop sign violations. So we've been monitoring it. We've been um, trying to enforce traffic regulations just to do it, what we can to keep those streets safe given the uh, added traffic. At this point, I think it's too early to say that we're going to start looking at dramatic measures, and, and I'm not sure if that's what the councilman suggesting that we look at more dramatic measures, but I don't think we're at that point yet. No, I'm not suggesting that. I'm just trying to find out. And you give me a kind of an up-to-date uh, understanding of the situation. And I think the problem what we run into is that we really don't know what your end is doing as far as traffic control and that type of thing. That's why I asked the question. Okay. All right. Councilman Stikos. Yeah, just to follow up on um, John's comments, I, I think that uh, you know, living in that area, the traffic, once school is out, uh, is much better than when school is in session, when Parkview is in session. And uh, so the summer may be kind of a, a calm period, and then the problem will arise again, I think, in September. So I think uh, if we could get people or fewer people driving their kids to Park View, that might help the situation a lot. Uh, and I don't know exactly how to do that, but I think some thought should be given to that. Anyone else like to speak on the matter? Councilman Hopkins. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, yes, I, I went with the mayor to the first meeting that we had down at Parkview, and uh, Councilman McCauley was there, as well as Councilman Laney and Councilman Stikos. And uh, we listened to about 300 people in the audience voice their opinion on this. Uh, the next day, as it was supposed to open, it rained, so they, they didn't put the, uh, the lines down because of the rain. Uh, I went back again the next day. Uh, I had a sign made up in my garage saying uh, one way, do not go, one way, and before I knew it I had ten women with signs with me, and uh, we stayed there for a couple of days, and uh, school was in session, uh, the channel 10, 12, and 6 all showed up, and I asked Mayor Laza on channel 12 if he would at least reach out to sit down at the table to talk to us about it, 
But from my perspective, I saw an increase in Cranston Police Patrol. I saw the DPW uh, director, Mr. Mason, come by and stop and look. And just from my own observations, I saw traffic backed up from Parkview to Warwick Avenue for at least 10 to 15 minutes. And the alternate routes were cutting through the uh, Cranston neighborhood side of Roger Williams Park. So uh, again, I continued to raise those concerns and uh, met with some of the, uh, the women, uh, Lisa Gibb in particular, and uh, we, we have monitored it, but we have not gotten any response from the City of Providence as to sitting down at the table to talk to us about it. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Favicchio. Uh, thank you, Council President. Yeah, maybe, maybe we could have a, both police and fire give us their opinion uh, at that safety services uh, session if possible, just because obviously uh, fire and rescue have an issue too. If they're backing up from Park View to Warwick Avenue, that's gonna create some problems and they can't get through. What do they do to get around the traffic? Uh, and they, they can't go through the park anymore because they'll be going the wrong way. So uh, maybe we could do that as well. Councilman Pavlovskis, could you officially add this to the uh, safety services meeting for next week? Sure, we'll, have it on the, we'll have it on the meeting for next month. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you. Anyone else to speak on the matter? Uh, well, from my perspective, it's really about transparency. This happened really quick. Uh, we didn't know anything about it until basically the decision was made. Um, sadly, that's not the way government's supposed to work. I think if we did that in this chamber, uh, there would be a few hundred people coming in telling us that uh, we did the wrong thing. So. Hopefully the mayor and can work on, with his administration, looking at traffic and looking at ways to try to mitigate the issue. Uh, but I think this resolution codifies that we object to the whole plan. Clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 Now the next resolution is in support of House Bill 2017-H6051. Uh, this was an email that we received from the Burville Town Council. If you remember, they were here asking us to pass a resolution opposing the power plant, and we told them we would do whatever they needed. They requested us to support this piece of legislation. Uh, so it's before us to support the bill to give more power to cities and towns in regulating energy usage in energy facilities. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. I have motion Second. To I have a motion and a second. Under discussion? Okay. Seeing none, clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 Moving on, reports of committees, safety services, and licensing. You are up first, Chairman Papalowskis. Thank you, Mr. President. First up, we have Class B Victiling Liquor, Argento Restaurant, LLC. DBA Vitola. Motion to approve. I have a motion to have a second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Under discussion. Seeing none, clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 Congratulations. Good luck. Okay, moving on, we have an, one more Class B Victiling Liquor, Legal Seafoods LLC, DBA Legal Sea Bar. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Under discussion, Councilman Sykos. Yeah, where are we with the, the uh, cap? Are we over the cap or oh, yeah. on liquor licenses? By a lot. Madam Clerk. Yes, we are. They, they, they only require council approval when they are over the cap. And so are we five over the cap, or I know you might Oh, not. the cap is 69 in the code. Okay. It's before committee. So the, the, we are at 85. A couple of those are, I believe, um, we have two that are tied up in bankruptcy. Um, so they're not all fully issued. but. That's, just, that's what, where we are. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 
That concludes safety services. Thank you, Chairman. Moving on to the Finance Committee, Council Vice President Favicchio. Thank you, uh, Council President. Uh, the first thing we had, uh, which came out of committee, was the advice and consent on the appointment of Jeff Barone as Director of Senior Services. Motion to approve. I have a second. motion. I have a second. Under discussion. Seeing none, clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 Congratulations, Director Barone. Like to say a few words to the gallery? <laughs> I'd just like to thank them for their support and their encouragement. And I will not let you down. I will not embarrass this city, this mayor, or this city council. Thank you. Thank you, Director. Thank you, Director. I know a lot of us uh, gave you some fine comments at the committee, but I will just add that. You are perfect for the job. Mr. Valletta said it correctly. Very proud to have you over there. I think it'll be a, a very positive thing for the seniors in our community and a positive for our community. So thank you for your service, sir. Thank you. Move, moving on, we have, next we have 5-17-03, an ordinance authorizing the city to utilize Western Library impact fees for capital projects at Central Knightsville and Oak Lawn branches, sponsored by Council President Farina, myself, Referred to finance on 6-5. It passed, uh, I believe, unanimously. Motion to approve. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Under discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 Next, we have 5-17-04 ordinance ratifying the attached memorandum of agreement between the city and the Teamsters Local 251, uh, the MOA, uh, fiscal year July 1, 2015 to June 30, 2018, sponsored by the mayor, referred to finance, and it passed there. You have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Second. I have a second. I also have a second. Under discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 <coughs> yes. 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 Uh, then we next we have resolution authorizing motor vehicle tax abatements. This passed in the committee. You can take. Do you have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. I have a motion to a second. second. I have a motion and a second under discussion. Seeing none, clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 That's Chairman Hopkins, we are moving on to Public Works. You are up, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. I have uh, Ordinance 517-02, Ordinance and the Amendment of Title 12 of the Code of the City of Cranston, 2005, entitled Streets, Sidewalks, and Public Places, Sidewalk Reconstruction Cost, Share program sponsored by Councilman Stikos, Poplaskis, Laney, and Arquetto, and this has been approved by the committee. Do I have a motion? I have a motion, motion approved. Approve. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Under discussion? I'd like to be added to the sponsor if the four sponsors don't mind. Thank you very much, Councilman Stikos. Clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 The next item is a resolution naming the Cranston Senior Services Center, the Michael A. Traficanti Enrichment <coughs> Center, sponsored by Councilman Hopkins, co-sponsored by Council President Farina, Councilman McCauley Arquetto, as amended in committee 615 2017. This is passed unanimously in committee. Motion to approve. Second. second. I have a motion and a second. Under discussion? Councilman Arquetto. Yeah, I'll just, uh, I'll keep it brief, but uh, you know, I've, I've been in politics many years, uh, about 20 years, and, and the three people that, that helped me 
begin my career were uh, Mike Traficani, Frank Lasciotti, and Ron Pagliarini. And, and three of those people, uh, they've all done wonders for the city of Cranston. There's numerous stories about the mayor. Uh, you've heard from Chief Mancuso, Danny Capuano. Uh, we can go on and on and on. But, but Traff truly cares and loves the city of Cranston and the people in it. So I hope you support the resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Laney. Uh, thank you, Council President. Traff. I've known Traff most of my adult life. In fact, I live in the same street he does. In the past, I've worked against Mayor Trafficanti. I also have worked for him. One thing I can say about Traff, he's an upright guy, he's a man of his word, he cares about the city of Cranston. I will, I am so happy that I have the opportunity to vote yes on this particular resolution. He thinks that he deserves it, and he's been a model for most political people in this city. He's a legend, and he's a person that we all have to look up to. So good luck, Traff. I'm glad you're alive to see this. I would I'd hate to be in a position to be doing this when you weren't around. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Hopkins. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, those are kind words, Councilman Laney and Councilman Arquetto. Uh Traff is a mentor, a friend, uh, a coach, uh, kind of set the table for me and helped me in many, many ways uh, in a lot of different areas. But uh, I can think back to the starting of the senior games 20-something uh, years ago, and many of the people in the audience uh, were there with us when we put it together. And, uh, Traff has showed me the way and the light, and uh, I can't think of a, a better person in the city of Cranston than to have this senior center named after him. So it gives me great pleasure to not only support it, but to sponsor this legislation. Councilman Poplowskis. Thank you, Mr. Council President. Um, when I came and ran for office the first time in 2012, I didn't know many of you or most of you, and Mayor Traficanti reached out. To, uh, to, to, to wish me uh, the best and you know, give me some advice. And he always has a smile on his face and works hard for the residents of Cranston and has done so for a long time. So I will be supporting this. And if the other sponsors don't mind, I'd like to be added as a co-sponsor as well. Councilman Stikos. Uh, I served on the school committee with uh, Mike Traficanti and I think he has a lot of uh, admirable qualities. I think he, the thing that I noticed the most was he ran a really uh, good meeting, which doesn't sound like much, but when you've sat through some bad ones, it's uh, pretty important. Uh, however, I think it's completely inappropriate to name a building after a sitting elected official. Uh, I don't uh, necessarily think somebody has to be dead but I do think they have to be out of office. This is like an endorsement by the city council for a candidate, uh, and I don't think that's appropriate. And I also think we have to um, remember that while uh, Mike Traficanti did a lot of good things, that his administration was tarnished by corruption, by the public works director going to jail for kickbacks, by the parks director going to jail for kickbacks, uh, the indictment of the finance director. So I don't think, um, I just don't think it's appropriate to name a building after him. So I will be voting no. Councilman Colford. Thank you, Council President. Uh, just, you know, as a quick observation, I had an opportunity to uh, join the school committee and uh, Mayor Traff, whom I had known through uh, my mother-in-law and some other family members, as anybody who's lived in Cranston for any time, uh, would certainly know who he is. Um, but he reached out to me and helped me on numerous occasions, um, just as a, as a freshman, but that's as the individual that he was, and he's always looking to help individuals. Um, you know, Councilman Cauley and I just left the meeting earlier tonight before this one. Uh, Mayor Trapp is right over there right now, still serving the city, uh, as he always does, because he loves the city, he loves the people here, and that's what he does. So I, I don't think there's any uh, more fitting way we could do or a person that we could choose to actually name this building after him. So I will be supporting it as well. Thank you. Councilman Hopkins. 
Thank you, Council President. Um, there's an old saying that time heals old, old wounds. And I think in the last election, 25,000 people in this city voiced their opinion about Mike Traficanti with the vote of confidence for him to be on the school committee. That was the most votes of any elected official in the city. And uh, he has my unendorsed support. And uh, I can't think of anything more than 25,000 votes in the favor of one person in this city to, uh, to show that the people still love Traff. Councilman Arquero. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this. I, I told Traff I'd say this, and um, I just want to say it's very fitting that the city of Cranston names the Enrichment Center after uh, former Mayor Trafficanti. Uh, we're familiar with the old Yankee Stadium, and it was the house that R Ruth built. But uh, the, the Senior Center was the, is the place that Mike Trafficanti built, garnering the, the uh, federal funding for that building. So it's, it's very fitting that we do that. Thank you. Any further? Oh, Councilman McCauley. Uh, thank you, Council President. I wanted to thank uh, uh, Chairman Hopkins for allowing me to be a, a co-sponsor on this. Uh, I don't know Mike Traficanti as well as many of you, but when I've met him, he's been gracious to me. The, the person I do know is his best friend, and that's Ken Mancuso, who's a terrific judge of character. And I always go by what Kenny Mancuso tells me, and Kenny stood by him day in and day out. So that's good enough for me. I'll be voting yes for this. Thank you. Councilman Pavecchio. Thank you, Council President. Um, yeah, I mean, I can somewhat understand why uh, Councilman Stiko said that uh, honoring someone who's still an elected official by, by naming a building after them is a little out of the ordinary. But uh, also, but Mr. Valletta said that, you know, why do we always name a building after someone who's already passed on and really doesn't enjoy that. Um, and, and I was thinking about that and, and knowing Traff to be the hard worker that he is, and, um, he may never stop serving the city. <laughs> um, so you, we're not going to get a chance to name it, uh, name it after him when he's alive unless we do it now because he probably will work until his last, uh, last days. So, um, and that's the type of person that he is. He's always gracious. It uh, doesn't matter what party affiliation. And he's as evidently, uh, as a school committee candidate, it's supposedly nonpartisan, so it's technically not the same thing as what we do. But, but I think it's well-deserved. Uh, his dedication to the city uh, is unmatched. Uh, I, we, we, I won't have enough years to, do the, to put in the kind of time that he has. So uh, I'll be... Uh, supporting this, and I'd like to be added as a sponsor if the uh, chairman has no problem with it. Excellent. Anybody else? All right. So, um, you know, I remember Traff from a point, you know, being one of the younger members of the council, uh, I was actually in school when he was mayor. Um, <laughs> but I do remember when there, whether it was baseball, football, track and field, he would show up to our events. And he wouldn't just show up at the end and you know, give us the mayor's cup. He would be there supporting us, giving us good counsel, uh, helping us grow as young adults. Uh, and that is one of the fondest memories I have of the mayor. Um, you know, the first time I ran for office, I was not lucky enough to win. And one of the first people that called me was Mayor Trafficanti. Uh, he was a Republican who had just run for school committee and won. And I was surprised that someone from the other side would call me and say, you know, you did a great job, you ran a good campaign, you should be proud of what you did. That resonated with me because he is a fantastic person. Um, he's a good man. And I will happily name the Senior Center after him. I think there is no more deserving a person who, look at tonight, we're honoring him by naming a building after him, and where is he? He's next door serving the school committee. Other politicians, other elected officials may come in this room to hear their name and hear people talk about him, but not Mayor Traff. He's over there doing his job. And I agree with Councilman Favecchio. I don't think he's ever going to stop. Because a couple years ago, I said to a mayor, you're going to keep staying on the school committee. It's, you know, it's a lot of work. He said, I love it. I love serving the people, and I'll serve them any way I can. So I have a lot of respect for the mayor. Thank you, Councilman Hopkins, for, for bringing this up. And I'm happy to co-sponsor it. I think it's a fantastic thing. 
Anyone else? Clerk, please take the roll. Yes. Yes, with pleasure. No. Yes. 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 Since she's not here, I'm still going to stand up and clap because that's what we do. <laughs> on with the business of the evening. Thank you, Mr. President. I have a resolution in support of H6204, an act relating to the maintenance of town roads and urging passage by the General Assembly, restoration of roadways, utility fines. Sponsored by Council President Farina, Council Vice President Favicchio, Councilman Hopkins, Colford, Poplaskis, McCauley, and Arquedo. Motion to approve. Sorry, I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. second. I have a motion to second under discussion. Councilman Laney. Yeah, I'd like to be um, a co-sponsor of this also. I think it's, it's, a great, it's a great move. Thank you, Councilman Laney. Anyone else want to be added as a co-sponsor? It's, it's a good piece of legislation. No? Okay. Clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 That completes the uh, Public Works Committee work, uh, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Councilman Pavlowskis, you are up again, sir. Thank you, Mr. Council President. Uh, moving on in the Ordinance Committee agenda is 5-1705, Ordinance and Amendment of Title 10, Chapter 32, Code of City of Cranston, 2005, entitled Motor Vehicles and Traffic, Malvern Stop Sign Removal, sponsored by Councilman Stikos. You have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Before we move on, do we have a traffic report on this one? It's a removal. One moment, please. Uh, there is one that I thought I saw. No traffic report. No. No, we have not received one today. Uh, we should probably continue this until next month until we, oh, no, we do. Why don't we hold this, move on with the business of the evening, and if we have a traffic report and a positive endorsement, we can come back to it. <laughs> Director Coop will take care of that. <clears throat> Thank you. Chairman Hopkins, you're not done yet. I mean, uh, Chairman Pavlovsky, you're not done yet. We'll come back to you. Claims Committee. Uh, thank you, Council President. Uh, I'd like to report of uh, settled claims. It's here in our uh, docket as informational purposes. Um, and that's my report for this evening. Thank you, Chairman Colford. Motion approved. Second. Information only. Do we need it? Information only. We don't need a motion. I don't think we We're good. Right. We don't have right. Public hearings. Apologize. My brain went for a second. Um, open to anything you'd like to talk about. Anyone can come up and say whatever they like. Uh, name and address for the record as usual, Mr. Santori. Good evening. Good evening, Council President Farina. Good evening, Council Members. My name is Robert Santeri, Jr. That's S-A-N-T-U, two R's and an I. And I live at 30 Egan Road here in Cranston, Rhode Island. Uh, I'm just coming here to, this evening to speak on two matters. One is, I think it's fantastic the Council's uh, voted to support the uh, House and, I think it's just a House bill to um, hold essentially National Grid accountable for what they've done to the roads of not just Cranston, but in Rhode Island in general. I think as anyone who's driven here tonight, you can probably attest to the fact of the, some of the handiwork they've done on some of the side streets. And I think it's great too that uh, Councilman, uh, President Freenet, you, your res resolution earlier seemed about the energy sitting back. I think both of those are really great pieces of legislation and I'm glad the council passed them. But it's worth noting for a moment that both of those uh, resolutions, uh, bills in the House and Senate respectively, 
have been held for further study as of last month. It's the General Assembly, if it goes that further study, you're probably not going to see it anytime soon. Um, but that being said, this own council, uh, both twice now in the last two months in the ordinance meeting, have refused to talk about resolution proposed by Councilman Lanny about uh, guns in schools. Partially, I've been being at these meetings because it was held for public uh, further study in the General Assembly. But we have no problem voting on these fine pieces of legislation. Now, I'm just going to say this, and it is what it is. If you don't agree with Councilman Lanny's uh, legislation, fine. Vote it down. I can see your problems with it. I can see why I don't like it. But I think two things. One, I think it sets a very dangerous precedent to not vote on any piece of legislation offered up, particularly by the minority on the body in general, because you know it's 5-4, could be 5-4 next time, could be 6-3, could be 6-3 further for the Republicans, who knows? But point being is I think it sets a very negative attitude for the body. And number two, I think that something else that happened was a gentleman came and spoke, wanted to speak, that is, uh, about the thing that was tabled, and the council in the room told the chair that, yes, he can't speak on it as long as the chair wants him to. Chair said, come to this meeting. Now, if a taxpayer, Cranston resident, doesn't matter if a taxpayer or not, comes to this room, which typically it's nights like this, it's kind of sparse attendance, light attendance, say the least, especially for committee meetings. I think for committee meetings, you can all agree it's like maybe five people in the room. And he wants to give two minutes of his time to talk in front of you guys about a subject he's passionate about, he or she, just let him. I don't think it's a big deal. I don't think it makes a difference to anyone here if he says whatever. I mean, you let us speak during the council meeting, but we all know that the committee is aware of the legislation that comes here made. When, you, when you get, if it gets to, this, it gets to this body more times than not, it's going to be passed. So that's all I have to say, and I thank you for your time this evening, and thank you. Anyone else speak on any matter? Point of information, uh, Council President. Yes. Um, yeah, that, I don't believe that gentleman came here to speak tonight. He was offered the opportunity to come to the full meeting at, during public session, and he chose not to. So. Thank you, Chairman. Point, point of information, Mr. President. Yes. Just for the general public to, to realize that, that this body operates under Robert's rules and also rules in this chamber, and that's how we you know, conduct our meetings. That is a we correct don't statement. prohibit anyone from speaking at the proper time. Correct. <coughs> Colonel, how are you? <laughs> you would be surprised how many kids say that to me. I know. <laughs> I like Colonel Sanders. Uh, <laughs> as, as many of you probably know, my name is Greg Murka. Uh, I am the facilities manager of the Sprague Mansion, uh, and I'm the board of directors of the Cranston Historical Society. Uh, I'm here, requested to be here, to speak to you about the Ralph Square Monument cannons, which many of you probably saw an article by John Hill, who's uh, from, in Projo, uh, in the article about that. Um, and uh, I should say to you that this is a problem, or this is a situation that I've been involved with, started out with John Simonian, who was representative of uh, Cranston. He and I worked very hard to try to get the resolution to the canons back in the early 90s. Um, I could go into a long history of the canons, uh, um, but just let me say this. Um, the canons are your property. There is no doubt under the law the canons belong to the people of Cranston. Period. The end. And how that is, you can look at uh, documentation, historical documentation, whatever on this. Uh, the canons were put on the monument in 1924, just outside here, and they were taken down by a militia group working with the National Guard uh, in 1991. If you look at the law on things like this, the, uh, it, it's an issue of legal abandonment. Uh, the cannons that were on the Rolf Square Monument after World War I were considered literally by the National Guard as junk. They couldn't wait to get, the, uh, get them out of their armories and get rid of them. And so a lot of the veterans of Civil War, and that's, uh, I'm honoring them today. That's why I'm dressed like this. Uh, but they uh, uh, were given cannons 
and uh, ordinance like that to be on not just the Ralph Square Monument, but monuments all over the state of Rhode Island. And so the Ralph Square Monument went up in 1924, and it stayed there for a long time. It was there in 1974, and under the 50-year abandonment rule, which is the law, they automatically became the property of the people of Cranston. So paperwork and research and all of this stuff makes no difference in that regard. The cannons that were taken down in 1991 were taken away from the people of Cranston. It is your property. Now, what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about three stands of cannonballs, which are worth about $1,500. We're talking about two 1845 Ames or James guns that were uh, manufactured by the Ames foundry uh, that Governor Sprague procured as part he invested over $100,000 of his own money to outfit uh, Rhode Island troops at, at the outset of the Civil War and the cannons were part of that. Uh, and he procured 18 cannons. Five were captured at the first Battle of Bull Run the, the other 13 still remain here in Rhode Island. You're very lucky that that has happened because this is a problem across the country where reenactment groups and, and other people are descending upon cemeteries and monuments to, to, to take these things as toys to play with at reenactments, which is an insult, in my opinion, to every veteran who ever served in uh, Cranston and Rhode Island. Stop and think about this for one minute. If you think about this, what does our United States military rely on for their troops, the people? And after their service is through, what do all of these people become? They all become veterans. And here you have one of the branches of the military dismantling a veteran or approving to dismantle a veteran's monument. That is outrageous. But the cannonballs, as I say, are worth about $1,500 of your property. The two 1845 cannon barrels are worth about $60,000 a piece. And the 1836 cannon barrel, which is an extremely rare prototype of what's called the Mordecai system cannons, uh, pre previous to the Civil War, uh, that's dated 1836. That's worth estimated conservatively uh, about $150,000. So basically, what you're looking at, Cranston, you're the leaders of Cranston. I have uh, great respect for all of you. This is not a partisan issue. This is a bipartisan thing. Uh, the, 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 you're looking at over at least over a quarter million dollars worth of your property that's been taking away, I want to say illegally, but that's, I can't think of any other word. Uh, I do know this, uh, and a lot of people, if you look on the internet, are, your constituents are very concerned about this. They've been concerned about this when, when the can since the cannons were taken down in 1991. And, and there's a lot of uh, traffic over the internet even today about this. What had happened, and you see, I think Mayor Traficani, uh, uh, Mayor Laffey, uh, and Mayor Napolitano did not understand the, the, the laws that, that apply to these things for, for the, on behalf of the people. And I think they were misled in, to some degree. Uh, but what happens is, is the, the cannons are a proper, a, 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 an issue of abandonment. It's that plain and simple. They're an issue of abandonment, and therefore, by 1974, the cannons officially, under the law, became your property. Uh, they were taken down in 1991. So the, the, the mayors, I talked with a, a former council president uh, uh, and here and when Mayor Napolitano was, was mayor, and tried to say, this his history of what's happened with these cannons. Uh, and I think a lot of people were very interested in, in it, but 
didn't know how to proceed with that. And the answer is really the issue of abandonment. Uh, if you don't believe me, uh, I, can, I can tell you more. I'd like to do that if you're interested, uh, because I can go into more detail about this. I'd want to do that in sort of closed session. Uh, but, uh, Thank you. Uh, the, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not going to go. It, it, it's a long story, trust me on that. But, and there are a lot of people involved. Uh, just let me say this, I was called into the National Guard in the 1990s. I, I was, I served as uh, in the sesquicentennial commemoration commission under Chief Justice Williams. I uh, worked for the Nash, uh, Nathaniel Green Homestead, the Cranston Historical Society at the Sprague Mansion. Uh, I'm a member of the Sons of Union Veterans of the Civil War. Uh, a member of the Cranston Historical Society, of course, member of the Military Order of the Loyal Legion of the United States, MOLUS, uh, which are, a lot of them are descendants of Civil War veterans and officers, and I'm also a, a member of the Sons of Spanish American War Veterans. Those cannons were put on the monument by the veterans of the Civil War in 1924, the Spanish American War veterans, and the World War I veterans. That's sacred, in my opinion. I'm not here representing any of these organizations. I'm here as a concerned citizen of Cranston. Uh, and so I don't want uh, it to appear that I'm speaking on behalf of any one organization, but I can tell you there's a lot of members of all of these organizations that are very concerned about this as well. So, you know, I hate to say it like this, but the ball is really in your court. What's happening is the National Guard is insisting that they will turn over two of the three cannons if you can insure them, okay? The point is, is they don't have the right to insist on that because it's your property. They can't tell you what to do with your property. Uh, the, and, and what about the third cannon, the most valuable one? So my point is, is you, you really need to act now because, and be careful about what you sign because you don't want to sign your rights away. That's the reason why I, I'm here, is to make sure that you do, you take action that's necessary to protect the people and, and to protect these cannons. Now, what you do with the cannons afterwards, that's up to you. Uh, but it's your property, quarter of a million dollars, and they represent the people. Uh, the last thing I'll say is, somebody, uh, when I went to see the National Guard, I was asked, what's in it for me? And I didn't understand the question. Maybe I was a bit naive, I, but I didn't understand the question. And then it dawned on me, oh my God, that somebody thinks I'm trying to make money in some way off of this. So basically I leaned across the desk, put my elbow on the desk and pointed my finger in the air and I said, justice for the grand old fellows in blue and all of Rhode Island veterans, Cranston veterans especially. When, when I see that happening, like Douglas MacArthur, I'll fade away and you'll never hear from me again. That's how important this is. And if you don't believe me, uh, you know, ask the veterans of Auburn Post, which were, they were highly offended when they realized that they, the cannon that's on the monument now is a French Pac-75 that was put there to appease World War II veterans after the cannons were taken down. Well, I have news for you, Cranston. Uh, of the 16 million World War II veterans in the European theater and the Pacific theater, not one ever fired or served on a French Pac-75. And I can tell you that there are people that are laughing at you over that, accepting that. So uh, please, please give this some consideration and uh, stand up for the people and the veterans of Cranston. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Go on, Mr. Tomlins. Good to see you. Whatever he said, I agree to. <laughs> Richard Tomlins, 400 Farmington Avenue, Cranston. I wasn't going to show up tonight because I had taken the, the dossier off the computer and I said the only word I'd have to mumble is yes. 
That's about what I heard all night. But I ran into Nick Battiello at the Aurora Club at lunchtime, and he kind of got my juices flowing a little bit, so I thought I'd show up. First of all, Jeff, congratulations. Knowing Jeff, couldn't pick a better man. He's dedicated, he's smart, and he'll tell you to go to hell any time he feels like it. Uh, regarding the naming of the senior center, the thing that I thought most about was not calling it a senior center. I know a lot of people that's kind of turned off from that. They figure the word seniors almost uh, comes across as somewhat negative. As far as the rest of it, I think we're getting a little too deep in the weeds in this council, and I think we got ahead of ourselves. Uh, but I do want to thank uh, Councilman Stikos again. No matter when I agree or disagree with him, he always gives us a reality check on everything. So thank you. On the park. Remember, that, that's what it is, it's a park. It was never meant to be a driveway. What happened is it started to get used for such and the people got uh, obviously very used to it. Now I find out through a long, long career that if that decision holds, all those that are complaining now will find a way. They'll find a way to mitigate what they were uh, once doing and find some other way to handle their travel back and forth. It's Providence call. Um, I would agree that probably they should have notified the surrounding cities, particularly Cranston. For some reason, they chose not to, but it's still their call. Remember, it is a park, and that's what the intention was. The street that bounds it, which most people complain about, those beautiful homes, I spent a lot of time over there in campaigns, and there, that road there was practically part of the park for them. That's about all the traffic that was on that road was their coming and going. So naturally, they would be upset. But that's all I got to say uh, tonight. Thank you very much. You went well over the four minutes. I let you go, but... Thank you, sir. Moving on. Public hearings are now closed. Uh, election of city officials. Uh, officials. First up, we have Board of Canvassers, Democratic member and alternate, Councilman Arquetto. Thank you, uh, President Farina. I'd like to nominate Stephen CP for the position. I need a second. Second. I have a nomination and a second. Uh, through the chair to the administration. Mr. President, I may have to call on the city registrar to assist with this, but based on information he gave me, um, th there are a couple of issues with this appointment. Uh, first off being that according to state law, um, a employee of the state of Rhode Island is not permitted to serve on a board of canvassers. So it's my understanding that Mr. CP is an employee of the state of Rhode Island. I believe so. I can withdraw that. Is it okay, John, withdraw that? Certainly. Well, okay. last name is CP. Uh, shouldn't be there. All right. We will withdraw uh, Stephen's name, and I will submit Cindy Fogarty. Need a second? Second. Mr. President, my second point was going to be that according to state law, it's actually the mayor of the, the mayor that makes the appointment. Uh, for council approval. However, having, uh, being it is, is that Ms. Fogarty is second on the list, that would be the person that the mayor would put forward. So, um, but I argue that today. I should have a preference. I should have a preference. Yeah, a point of order. Sure. 
I've been on this council for 16 years. I've seen board of canvases, people appointed. I never heard of anybody saying that the mayor has to appoint the minority members of the board of canvases. And I think you just said that. Am I mistaken? Uh, I am looking at chapter 17-8, section 1781 which states that the mayor or the president of the town council shall nominate the members of the canvassing authority from lists of party voters submitted by the respective chairperson of the city or town political And that's the committee. president of the city council. Mayor or president of the In city council. In all the years I've been around, it's always been the president of the city council has always done it. I never heard of a mayor deciding who the minority member of the board of canvas is going to be. This has got to be a first. And I give you a lot of credit. I mean, you must have done a lot of digging to come up with that excuse. <laughs> and now we'll hear from your co-sponsor, Mr. Vieira. Lima. Mr. Lima. Lima, sorry. Mr. Red Dr City Dr Registrar, Dr directly Lima. Lima. Uh, Council President, if I may. You may. Uh, thank you, uh, Council President. Uh, in, in brief, one of the first things I did when I uh, came on, on board as the uh, new City Registrar uh, Councilman was I uh, reviewed the uh, Title 17 provisions that govern uh, Board of Cameras appointments, knowing that, in fact, there were three uh, vacancies uh, pending in the board. Um, and that is one thing I, I did notice um, in reviewing the statutes, where uh, it's clear that it's actually the mayor or president of the town council, which is, in, in, for the intent of the General Assembly, is actually directed towards um, towns that don't have a mayoral form of government. So the reason why the, uh, the statute's worded as such, and actually there's a bill pending in the General Assembly right now um, that would clarify that even further. However, the, uh, the mayor statutorily has always had that. Now in, in practice, from what I understand here in the city for a number of years, as you had stated, um, th there's been some deference given towards the order of preference listed on the list. But uh, from my understanding, the statute specifically does uh, give the mayor that right. Fine, you found that statute, but I've been involved in political in politics in this city since 1976. And I have been active in politics since 1976. And I have never, ever seen a situation where the mayor appoints the minority member of this, of the, to the Board of Canvases. Precedent should prevail in a situation like this, period. I don't care what kind of a uh, ordinance or that you found in the city charter. It's never been done before. This has got to be a first. And you know, and I can understand politics. I've been around it my entire life. But what's fair is fair. It never would have happened to a Republican minority member of this, of this council. Never. It, it never did happen. Never did. This is going to be a first. Just, just to be clear, uh, Councilman, it is the council that has the appointment authority. The mayor has the nominating authority. And that's, it's not a charter provision. It's a state statute. So it's section 1781. Councilman Arcadio, Mr. President, uh, just a couple of comments. First, you know, this is my ninth year on the council, uh, so I've been here a while, and um, I've got to say that, that while well, President Lanny was the president, um, and we held a majority, uh, the precedent that was um, established was that the minority party could um, recommend and nominate. Uh, who they want on the board of campus, if I'm correct. Is that correct, John? That's absolutely correct. Um, so precedent has been that way for at least nine years that, that I know. Um, this statute is a statute, I understand that, but the mayor, if he's going to choose, should allow the minority party to rec recommend a choice to him. So, I mean, that, that's only fair. So that, that's basically what I want to say. Sure. Madam Clerk would like to give us some guidance. Since I, I was appointed city clerk in 1999. In all those years, the council's practice has always been to adhere to the list provided by the chairman's party. I disagree with Mr. Coop and Mr. Lima. 
the statute that they cite says the mayor or the president of the city council. <coughs> now he's saying that's where there is no <coughs> city council. Excuse me. But I disagree. The word is or, which means either or. And longstanding practice has always been to adhere to the list submitted, and it's approved by the council. And I think even logic, as an elector, that you would not want a mayor making the nomination in any city or town. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilman Poplowskis? I just have a point of information. I don't have the list in front of me. The first name was disqualified, and then Councilman Arquetto, seconded by Councilman Lanny Mead, went down to the next name on the list, correct? Yes. So we're following the list that was submitted by the minority party, correct? That is correct. Okay. Thank you. Councilman Vivicchio? Yeah, I'm, I think I'm, I'm, I'd like to get a little bit of clarification. I think what Mr. Coop was saying, that he, he, despite the finding of that statute, he's going to honor the recommendation of the minority, minority leader. So I don't know what all the fuss is about. I mean, this, I mean, the fact that the statute exists, we can't change that. Maybe we've ignored it for 20 years. That's, that's great. But, um, and we've created our own format to do it in, but I, I don't see where the argument is because uh, Mr. Coop is saying we're going we're gonna to honor that, even though we found that it, it, that's not actually the way the statute is worded. Um, I, so I, I don't know. If I, I'd like to see, ask Mr. Coop to finish his. If I may, Mr. President, that the entire intent is to comply with the statute and uphold the tradition of the council by going to the next name on the list not skipping over any other name, honoring the spirit of that while also complying with the state law. That was, I don't understand what the controversy is. There is none. We're going to get to the same place. Thank you, Director. Councilman Lanny. We're not getting to the same place because our first nomination, nominee, you rejected. We withdrew based on what Mr. Coop told us. He said, because the General Assembly, there's a law that you're a member of the General Assembly or you work for the state, you can't be on the Board of Canvases. Uh, it's this, well, can you confirm that? Do we have a copy of that to show us? I have the attorney reading it now. Tell please, me. please do. I want to hear it. <coughs> and don't forget the ands or a buts. Uh, Councilman Lanny, I've been handed um, statute 17-8-2. I did not know this was going to be an issue tonight, so I'm coming at this just reading you a statute. I don't have any context for it, so if you'd like me to look at it some more, I can certainly do that. But it says, no person shall be appointed or serve as a member of the authority, meaning local canvassing authority, who is an officer or employee of the United States or this state, or who is an officer or employee of the authority's city or town, provided that in any city a member of the authority may be employed as a clerk. That's the, that's the uh, applicable section. All right. So therefore, you're saying, well, according to that statute, it's saying that no member of who works for the United States government, the state of Rhode Island, or the city of Cranston can be on the board of canvases. Am I correct? My interpretation, you can. That's what it seems to indicate, Councilman. Right. In the past, I've known several people who've worked for the city of Cranston who've been on the board of canvases. So, uh, so past practice I can't ap recall does that. not apply. I can't recall that. I mean, I do. I do, I did hear your comments before. Well, I can name one. And I, John DeGenova was a firefighter, employed by the city of Cranston. He was on the board of canvases. That's just one example. And, and, you know, you're, you're sticking to the letter of the law. This, this, is, not based, my, this is not my opinion. No, based on what, you're, what you've been given. 
what I've been given, correct. And, and, I, and I do generally agree with the sentiment. And I am not and saying... And while you were council president, I agree with the fact that deference has been given to the opposing not just parties. My, not just me as council president. Any it, it's been It goes back uh, 20, 30 years. The deference has always been given. I, and I now can't. all of a sudden we come up with a reason why we shouldn't. Unfortunately, maybe the name CP has a lot to do with it, but they should have, had, should have no play in this. What we've done in the past, we should, have, we should adhere to in the future, because things may change. And if things do change, the other party may play the same stupid game. I agree. And that's why I look at this as a stupid game. Was Mr. DiGenova, was he retired at the time he was on the board, or was he at, still active? He was retired. Okay. I was just thinking back about it. Anyways. But if you want to hold it, uh, Councilman, I can I could do further research. I would make a motion to continue this until we have a, a clarification it's from the problem. city solicitor. Well, I'll second that if that's the uh, dean's wishes. Do we have to we vote on that, yeah. Council President? We will vote. Clerk, please take any discussion first. Clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 I'll talk yet. Reluctantly, yes. Yes. So that'll be uh, before us next month. We'll have an opinion from our solicitor on whether or not the statute applies, and Mr. CP or the mayor can choose. We will uh, get some clarity for the body. Moving on, Cranston Public Library Board of Trustees. We have two reappointments. Council President? Yes. Um, if, if I may, uh, if, if it pleases the council, I can get an opinion as well from the Board of Elections and the Secretary of State's office to our aid in any decision making the council would like to make on this matter. Thank you, Director Lehman. That would be appreciated. Library Board of Trustees, and a motion and a second on the reappointments. So moved. Make second. a motion for Rosemary DeSilva, reappointment. Second. I have a motion and a second under discussion. Seeing none, clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 I have the second appointment. If I can motion a second. Uh, motion to approve. I have a second. Second. I have a motion and a second on the second library appointment. Clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 Moving on to grant writer. Um, I'm sponsoring uh, Lisa Kirschenbaum. I sent you a letter that she had sent me detailing her skills and experience. Uh, if you have any questions for Mrs. Kirschenbaum, she is here this evening. Um, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Motion to approve. And a second? Second. Under discussion, if anybody has any questions. Councilman Psychos. Yes, um, how are we going to be paying her? Because I know there was some discussion about whether it was a salary position or an hourly position, and I don't know if that was ever clarified. Uh, I believe we have 20000 in the budget, Director Strom. Um, I believe you can tell us how we're going to uh, execute the role. We just checked with the Council Thank you, Council President. In the budget, we have $20,000 available for next fiscal year, 2018 fiscal year. And as we discussed, I believe we talked about a monthly stipend, taking the 20 divided by the 12 months. That is correct. Thank you. So it will not be a salary position. It will be a stipended position. Uh, and we will hopefully get more grant funds to add to the coffers to, to help the city. 
Are you all set, Councilman Stikos? Uh, for now, let's see if Councilman Lanny has a question. Councilman Lanny. Uh, have we terminated the contract with the previous grant later? As far as I know, that's been terminated back in uh, December or January. Has the contract been settled? Has he, has he uh, been paid what he was due? It was paid strictly for grant writing. That's it. Hmm. Any other questions? Councilman Stikos. Yes, so I think what you're saying, Bob, is that his work as a grant writer has been compensated, but the dispute over the uh, stadium project has not been resolved? That is correct. However, I just want you to know, Councilman, that originally he did get paid almost $55,000 for just the uh, uh, project at Cranston Stadium. So that's the total amount that he's that's been paid as, for? That's the, as much as I've paid him to date. And there's what? There's something like uh, 200000 that he's well, says he's due? It's a hundred and some odd thousand, yes. But quite a, some of it, well, a good portion is interest, which, uh, you know. Are, are there discussions paid. going on with him? or? Uh, uh, there's been some discussions internally. There's been some discussions internally? Internally with uh, the administration. Okay, well, I'd, I'd like to urge you to, or the administration, to talk with him and, and uh, try to resolve the matter. Um, that's what we're, you know, focusing on. Good. Any further discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 Thank you for the opportunity. Welcome to Cranston. <laughs> <laughs> Historical Cemeteries Commission. Oh, I'm sorry, I skipped uh, zoning board review. There was a resignation. Mr. Minucci uh, resigned. His resignation letter is attached. Uh, Historical Cemeteries, I am appointing Catherine Helwig uh, to the position. She sent a letter. Uh, she was recommended by the rest of the Historical Cemeteries Commission. So we will be appointing her to serve on that body. Report of City Officers. All right. I think we're clear. Executive Communications. Mr. President, the uh, report on hiring of special counsel consultants has been uh, distributed to the council members. I do want to apologize to Councilman Stikos. He asked for a change in that report last month, and I thought it had been done, but it wasn't. I will, uh, again, try to make sure it's changed by next month. Thank you. Uh, first I believe off, Council, Councilman Lanny might have requested the change. Uh, but well, either apologies. way, it'll get done next month. Thank you for the update. Uh, my, I also have a request from Chief William McKenna to be continued in service for one year. Uh, Chief McKenna uh, has reached his 55th birthday, but not his 65th, and uh, is qualified to continue in service. And I'd like to put that request in front of the council, please. Thank you very much. I'll entertain a motion. motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion to approve our great chief, Mr. McKenna. Clerk, under discussion, seeing none, clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 Uh, next up, Mr. President, uh, Captain Frank Ennis of the Fire Department, um, uh, having reached his 55th birthday, but not his 65th, has been has requested to be continued in service. Uh, he's demonstrated his eligibility, and i am put that request in front of the council. I have Captain Frank Ennis to be continued one year of service. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Under discussion? 
Seeing none, clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 And lastly, Deputy Chief Paul Valletta, uh, having reached his 55th birthday but not 65th, has asked to be continued in service. He has demonstrated his uh, ability to continue in service, and I put that request in front of the council. Motion to approve. I have a motion and a second. Under discussion, seeing none, clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 <clears throat> yes. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, for purposes, there was a claim settled by the city solicitor uh, from Charles Pistro, bankruptcy trustee, for thirty-five thousand. It's informational. Anybody has any questions? Now moving on to oh, Councilman Psychos. Yes, I have a question back on the um, on the uh, special counsel, um, and I understand that there's a a um, a lawsuit because the city, um, according to the lawsuit, took down some signs on posts but was not taking down all signs. And so it appeared, according to the lawsuit, that the city was targeting this person and that therefore their uh, rights were being violated. It could, um, uh, I don't know if you can give us a report on that now or um, we at a later date? Yeah, uh, through the chair, through the president? Yes. Um, is councilman, there's some allegations that it's my understanding that the, um, a lot of times you see on telephone poles mainly, there's these signs, um, apparently, allegedly, and I'm saying allegedly because it's, it's really just a complaint has just been filed, but attorney Sinapi represents an attorney hunter who alleges that the city on purpose only put, took down his sign on the poll. It's my, our defense is simply, first of all, we do that on all signs, on all polls, and also that happened to be actually a state road. So the state might have done some of that as well. So for some reason, I, you know, I think a lot of it's frivolous. That's our position on it, that he somehow feels that we actually targeted his attorney sign, a sign that should have been there in the beginning. So um, I don't know if we've officially answered it, but the complaint has been filed. Attorney DeSisto is going to be handling the defense of that. So the, 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 the sign was uh, for legal help, call me? Exactly. Okay. I can, uh, I can tell you that it's our position, or at least Stan Peichel's position, that all signs are taken off telephone poles. It's well, I wish they were. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's indiscriminate. I think it would, yeah. they're busy enough as it is. I'd be really surprised they just pick a certain attorney's sign and leave the rest. But that's their allegation. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney. Before we move on to Council President Communications, we do have to uh, continue the Malvern Street stop sign. Apparently, the traffic study is uh, not available as yet. So I will entertain a motion to continue that to next month when a traffic report hopefully will become available. Motion to continue. Second. I have a motion and a second. Under discussion, seeing none, clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 Now we're on to Council President of Communications. Uh, so all in all, it's been a good few months for the city of Cranston, with the exception of uh, the transparency issue with the city of Providence. I'm hopeful that the mayor will work with Mayor Alorza to see if we can find a solution and work with our traffic department to see if there's ways we can potentially mitigate things as we, as we go through the summer and into the fall. Uh, we, you know, I mentioned it before, but Mayor Traficani, I believe, uh, deserves this recognition. I'm very glad as a council we decided to do that. Uh, and lastly, you know, Councilman Arquetto brought this up a little bit. Um, there's a misconception in the community that, you know, we, we don't allow people to speak or we, we try to strong on them. Uh, we adhere to Robert's rules and typically we, we follow them almost all the time. We have to. It's in the charter that we have to follow Robert's rules unless we suspend them. Um, if something is tabled or not before us, we already had a hearing on it 
and to keep the meeting moving, we won't hear a hearing on it again. Um, that doesn't mean it'll never come back. If someone wanted to take an item off the table, that, that could very well happen at an ordinance committee meeting, um, but it hasn't. So the items that go on the table end up staying on the table. Um, I had one a few years ago that was a, a library issue that went on the table, and once it went on the table, we stopped talking about it, and, and we ended up taking it out, pulling it back, and then resubmitting it. Uh, as far as the other actions of the council, the tonight and resolutions, um, both of those were requests by other town councils. Uh, and, and I will say, when the Burgle people came in here, all nine of us stood up and said, whatever you need. So that was an, an easy win. Um, typically, we know it's helpful for the study, but again, they asked for it, and, and we pushed it forward. Uh, as far as that, I think uh, enjoy your summer. It's July 4th holiday coming up, everyone out there. Enjoy the fourth, stay safe. Uh, now I'll move on to council member communications. Who's on the list? Council, council McCall, you are first, sir, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you, council president. Uh, regarding the conditions of seats at Parkview Middle School Auditorium, uh, many of the questions and concerns I had regarding this situation, I've had answered, so I'd like to pull it at this time. Uh, the second one on my agenda was regulating how long a dumpster can remain on private property. I've been working uh, with uh, um, Mr. Barone, and he's been working with um, the city uh, officials regarding this. I'd like to see this uh, further studied, if we may. It's, it's becoming an ongoing problem. Um, and I wonder if we could maybe send this committee for a further study. Councilman Hopkins, could you put this on the Public Works Committee for Councilman McCauley and potentially have someone from the administration just give us an update on dumpster policies on private property? Yes, I will. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you, sir. You're welcome, Councilman McCauley. Uh, Councilman Arquetto, you are up next, sir. Thank you, Council President Freeman. I just take them out of order. I'm going to take Gladstone Street School first. I want uh, two of the chair to the administration. Um, I'd like either Mr. Coop or someone from the mayor's office to take a ride um, up Gladstone Street from Prince Street up the hill by the school, and and that fence is just atrocious. It's 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 an embarrassment to the city. I think we need some type of long-term plan on how we're going to address this. I think Ken Mason, the last time he was here, he said it's a sidewalk issue. The fence has a problem because they can't put the poles in because of the sidewalk. Um, perhaps we need an engineer, city engineers to look at this because uh, I think we need to address it now before school starts in September. So let's be proactive. Let's get at work and, you know, let's stop being embarrassed and try to upgrade our amenities here in the city because uh, I've got people calling me, emailing me, people from who don't live in the city. It's atrocious. Thank you, Councilman Marquette. I'm assuming we're not going to uh, hear about the cannons again. Okay. Through the chair of the administration, you want to talk about Gladstone Fence? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will take a right. I, if I if I uh, remember correctly, but I'm here. I'm here to serve you, Councilman. Um, I think we, we addressed that a couple of times so far. Is that the, on the right, going up Gladstone Street, on the right-hand side, the back of Aldi's? Yep. We, we did repair it a couple of times. Well, it's not, it's not our fence. It it's belongs to that property owner. But we, re, we repaired it because there was holes in it. But I'll have somebody reach out to the property owner. Thank you. Uh, next is the... Uh, we heard a lot about the uh, governor's spray cannons. I just want to, um, everyone to, I passed the handout, refer to the memo I passed out. Um, I made quite a few phone calls in the last couple of weeks as the cannons were, were commandeered by the National Guard, and I found out a number of things. But uh, just for the record, the governor, who's the commander in chief of the National Guard, had nothing to do with the cannons being commandeered, nor did the adjutant general. It was a Colonel Duffy who, decided that they need to, needed to be upgraded and refurbished. So he's the, uh, I guess, culprit, we'll say. 
The second, page two of the memo, states the reasons why the cannons were confiscated or commandeered. They give six, one through six, if you're following along. And then page three is just the completion of page two because it just ran out of pages and you have to follow that. But the bottom line, if you look at um, the criteria uh, of the Civil War candidates and, and, and the reasons why they believe they're federal property, the candidates have been on the federal property books prior to 90, 1998, but he doesn't give it an exact date, which I find, as a historian, very questionable. And if they're on the books around 1998, which is very late, if those cannons were manufactured in 1841, as they say they were, there's a great hiatus there. And um, we need to really find who the owner of those cannons are. I think right now, according to what this document shows, the National Guard says they own it. However, the, the reasoning or the evidence that the National Guard presents is very late. Or it's, 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 put it this way, it's quite recent compared to, to how old those cannons are. So I, I think we need to really um, do our research. I'm sure there's something we can come, come across. As a historian who teaches the Civil War, um, I can say by fact that many wealthy Americans, both in the North and the South, paid for their own equipment for their own regiments. They would outfit their own regiments. And Go Governor Sprague, who was a multimillionaire because of the print works, uh, his operation, uh, he, he uh, outfitted his regiments with cannon and uh, ammunition and, and weapons. So it's not surprising that Governor Sprague flipped the bill for these cannons. And if he did, they, they are Sprague property, uh, city of Cranston property, in my opinion. But that, that needs to be discovered, and, uh, and we're going to be, I hope the council supports me in my continuation on the uh, ownership of this cannon. One last thing, I'm, I'm very hesitant and reluctant to, to sign anything at this time, and, um, you know, as far as agree that they, they are the owner, I think that would be a mistake. I understand on the Laffey administration, they have a document that Mayor Laffey signed that stated that the cannons were on loan uh, from the National Guard to uh, the city of Cranston. But uh, so at this time, I, I'm glad that Mayor Fung held off and is, is studying this uh, quite closely. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Arcata. Any other council member communications? Councilman Stikos. Just a, a question with uh, Mr. Barone going to senior services, who should we be contacting when we have uh, constituent issues? I believe it's Carlos Lopez, um, but he can stand up and tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Back to work. Unless he doesn't want to get the calls. He may dump it on and she'll drop. Hey, Councilman uh, and all council members, uh, I will be handling constituent affairs uh, requests from all of you, so uh, all of you have my contact information, so you can just start sending them my way. Thank, Thank you. you. Councilman Leanna, you had your hand up? Yeah. Do um, you start July 1st, or can we call you tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> you have my number. You can call me anytime. Okay. Uh, the other, the, uh, I'm looking at the legal uh, bill that we, we all got a copy of, and I'm looking at the Karen Gilbo charges. And I added them up quickly in my head. And I got somewhere, anywhere from $115,000 to $120,000 in legal fees. And I'd just like to know if the administration intends to give us any update concerning why we're spending all this money on legal fees, and particularly on this one case. And maybe we should go into executive session if that's amenable. To the administration, are you prepared to go through that tonight? Or would you like that on a, a committee night we could go into executive session potentially, like a finance, the finance committee? Um, I don't think the solicitor or I is prepared to discuss this tonight. It wasn't on the agenda. Um, if the council wants to schedule an executive session, I, I'll, yeah, it's certainly the council's prerogative. 
Uh, why don't we put a executive session on the finance committee meeting, if uh, you are amenable, Councilman Fatecchio, so we can get an update for Councilman Laney. Sure, it will be executive session. Thank you. Councilman, anything else? Nope, that's it. Thank you. No problem. Councilman Fatecchio. Yes, just one other quick thing through the chair to the administration. How are we doing on the street sweeping? Um, I, it's. I talked to John Corso um, early, late last week. We were about three quarters of the way through. They did get sidetracked a little bit because they were trying to coordinate with waste management, not picking up, not sweeping on pickup days. But because of road construction and the paving started, they had to sweep a few streets that there were trash barrels. So they had to go around the trash barrels and they have to end up going back to, to get the whole street. But they're about uh, two thirds of the way through. They should be done by the end of July, first week of August. Okay. Really, it's gonna take that long? All right, just, just for the well, occasion, my, my have, streets haven't been done. So we only have I'm two sweepers and we've had a lot of rain. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Director. Councilman Pablowskis. Thank you, Mr. Council President. I actually have a, a charter question or a comment or, or something along those lines. I was on Facebook this weekend and I noticed an invitation to a political fundraiser that had the seal for the city of Cranston on the invitation. And I went back and I reviewed through the charter in section 15.12, if you allow me to read this, says the official seal of the city of Cranston shall not be used or reproduced by any person for any purpose but official city business, nor shall the city seal or a reproduction of it be affixed to any but official city documents unless otherwise provided by law. So it, my concern was the city seal being used for political purposes or any other purposes other than city business. Uh, through that the uh, through the chair. Yes, Th that is that is correct. The city seal cannot be used by any other organization or entity unless it's official city business. Okay. When that has happened in the past, there at one point was a letter um, sent out. I mean, we you know I filed a complaint with the police department. Can we maybe send a letter to uh, anybody that I can give you a copy of the invitation? It was on Facebook. To the Cranston Democratic. I don't. It doesn't do matter it. whether it's 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 a political matter or a private okay. person or a company. The city seal cannot be used. Okay, thank so, you. So that was a Democratic City Committee. Yeah, I saw it on Facebook. Can you send them a letter, Madam Clerk, and and go through the process to let them know, you know, after. I one, will if someone will give me a copy of it. Okay. Councilman can, can, can you make it available? Yeah. Thank you. Any other council member communications? Seeing none. Charter violations are very serious. Charter I violations are very serious. Old business. There's no old business. Introduction of new business. 6-1701, ordinance transferring appropriations and amending the budget for the fiscal year commencing July 1, 2016 and ending June 30th, 2017 for fourth quarter transfers and supplemental appropriations to be referred to finance for hearing on July 10th. <clears throat> Proposed ordinance 16-1702, an amendment of chapter 20 of title 11 of the code of the city of Cranston titled parks and recreational facilities for Ocean Avenue, scenic lookout, no fishing, to be referred to ordinance commission, <coughs> ordinance committee, for hearing on July 13th. <clears throat> the following two ordinances are being referred to finance also for hearing on July 13th. I'm sorry, July 10th. 6-1703, uh, six, six ordinance ratifying school committee's collective bargaining agreement with Rhode Island Laborers District Council Local 1322 for tradespeople mechanics unit July 1, 2017 through June 30th, 2020, and proposed ordinance 6-1704, ratifying school committee's collective bargaining with Rhode Island Laborers District Council Local 1322 bus drivers unit. <coughs> July 1, 2017 through June 30th, 2020. The following resolutions are all being referred to the Finance Committee also for hearing on July 10th. Resolution for loan order authorizing the issuance of 
and general obligation bonds and notes of the city to finance the construction, improvement, renovation, repair, alteration, furnishing, and equipment of public buildings in the city. Resolution loan order authorizing the issue of $20 million general obligation bonds and notes of the city to finance the construction, renovation, rehabilitation, repair, improvement, and landscaping of roads, sidewalks, and drainage facilities in the city, and all costs incidental or related thereto, <clears throat> including but not limited to engineering costs in the city. Resolution loan order authorizing the issue of $4 million in general obligation bonds of the city to finance the acquisition, improvement, renovation, and repair of fire and public safety equipment in the city. Resolution for a blue line on Park Avenue from Broad Street to Phoenix Avenue. This to be referred to Public Works for hearing on July 10th. <clears throat> the following two petitions from National Grid are to be referred also to public hearings on July 10th. <clears throat> a poll location at Shore Avenue and a poll location at Seven Mile Road. The following claims are, will be referred to the Claims Committee, which will hold its next hearing on August 7th. <clears throat> the following are property damage claims. Frank Montero from an alleged incident in the summer fall of 2015. Narice Nepta from an alleged incident on March 15, 2017. Tracy Hennenberry from an alleged incident on April 7, 2017. Barry Misbin from an alleged incident on May 16, 2017. John Arakalian Jr. from an alleged incident on May 22, 2017. Frank Mariano from alleged incident on May 31st, 2017. Nicholas Reed from alleged incident on June 4th, 2017. Personal injury claim of Princess Mark from alleged incident on May 1, 2017. <clears throat> that is all I have. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Can I have a motion to send the business to the appropriate committee as mentioned by the city clerk? I have a motion of a second. second. A motion of a second under discussion. Seeing none, clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 The city's next regularly monthly meeting will be held on Monday, July 24th, 2017. That is all the business to come before us for the evening. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? We are adjourned.